Let's do some drills. And also talk about this movie. Hey guys, what's up? This is Welcome back to another movie review, AK after I saw. This time it is going to be on Space Jam 2, A New Legacy, or just Space Jam, A New Legacy. I saw this with my friend Matthew Bailey. We just got back from seeing it. Now I'm going to talk about it for you guys. In this film, uh, instead of Michael Jordan, um, we got LeBron James. And in this film, his son wants to become a game designer and instead of a basketball player like his dad. And uh, they get into a fight, and uh, his son gets kidnapped by this guy in this world filled to the brim with Warner Brothers characters in the Warner Brothers Studios uh, company and from there he has to get his son back by teaming up with the Looney Tunes even though he's trying to get other Warner Brothers characters to partner with him instead of the Looney Tunes uh, because of reasons uh, if I go into more then obviously spoilers but uh, yeah they join together as the Toon Squad so basically the Toons are playing basketball again and of course, you know, instead of just there being Looney Tunes, there's also tons of references to other Warner Brothers characters and other Warner Brothers uh, movies, even R-rated ones, which I was really surprised with. So yeah, all the Looney Tunes are back, and they're playing basketball again, except Pepe Le Pew. He's dead, pretty much. Hell, he's not even on this shirt. I have another Looney Tunes shirt. He's not on that either. You want, you want to see? You want to see? Yep. Not on this shirt either. It's like he never existed. Now, when Space Jam came out, it was a big deal. Uh, kids absolutely loved it. Critics might not have loved it as much as the kids did, but later over the years have, has gained a massive cult following. I'm not sure if it's because it's Looney Tunes playing basketball with Michael Jordan or Lola Bunny. Probably both. I don't know, but it, it became huge over the years, and people, <laughs> after 25 years, people are still talking about it. Now, I like the first movie, okay? I actually recently got the 4K uh, 25th, and this is 25th anniversary, right? Uh, it doesn't say on here, but I recently got the 4K upgrade of the uh, first movie, and uh, I sold my original uh, Blu-ray of the first movie not too long ago. Uh, perfect timing, too since the new film already just came out and I'm talking about it. But uh, yeah, I rewatched this and Looney Tunes on 4K. Yeah, so of course I was gonna get this and upgrade it. So yeah, um, I don't love the film, okay? I don't think it holds up as well as the first few times I watched it when I was younger, when I was like 11 or 10, but uh, yeah. I mean, I like the film, I think it's good, okay? In fact, I'm probably never gonna hate the, the movie, okay? So when I heard a sequel was coming, uh, it's kind of hard to believe. I mean, this was a sequel that people were hoping would exist. Like, this is the sequel film that we thought would never see the light of day, but now it's out. In a time when, you know, last year we had nothing, this year we have more things. Now, I'm still upset of how bad the new Tom and Jerry movie was for me. I mean, I really wanted to like that film, but I just didn't. Could this film make up for that? Eh, it's definitely better than that. But yeah, let me get my main problems out of the way, okay? First off, first off, LeBron is not a good actor here, okay? Now, I'm not gonna go out and say Michael Jordan's performance in the original film was Oscar-worthy or anything, but I thought he was more entertaining in that film because, you know, he just had to worry about the Looney Tunes and not pretty much his... I mean, he had to worry for his life because he was going to get taken if he lost the basketball game, but he didn't worry, have to worry about his, you know, family or anything like that. But, uh, you know, it's just, I feel like when it comes to basketball players or sports players in movies, I don't really feel like they're meant for the big screen unless they're like in cameos or something. But really, I mean, LeBron's fine as a basketball player. I mean, I... I respect, I'm, I'm not really a sports person, but, uh, you know, I'm sure he's a good man in real life, okay? Uh, yeah, that's one of my main problems, and another problem I have is the villain. I like the villain in the first movie, but here, I mean, he's a live-action guy who's, you know, controlling, you know, the computer world of Warner Brothers and is trying to delete the tunes, like, and trying to keep all of his family and stuff in there with him, but, uh... You know, I like Danny DeVito as the animated villain. I forgot what his name was, but uh, I thought him and the Monstars were entertaining. But uh, yeah, 
Um, and honestly, when it comes to the film, the first 30 minutes I thought were boring. It really doesn't start picking up. We don't get to see the Looney Tunes until after those first 30 minutes, so don't expect this to be, you know, putting you right into the action. I mean, we had to see a lot of the Looney Tunes in the beginning, but uh, yeah, I mean, one thing I will say, and I am so relieved by, is that the 2D animated versions of the Looney Tunes are in the movie quite a bit. In fact, it, they don't get fully CG'd until, like, you know, the last act of the movie. And I'm surprised. Um, I'm surprised how much they referenced, you know, older stuff in the film. And honestly, I was just looking, me and Matthew Bailey, I saw this with Matthew Bailey, and we were just pointing out, like, some random stuff. Like, there was a lot of references to R-rated films out there, and I'm not going to spoil, but... Uh, they were honestly really fun to see, so that's one thing, that's the best thing I could say about this movie, is that it was fun picking out, you know, the little, you know, cameos that are, I mean, basically, it's Ready Player One, but PG rated, pretty much, and I mean, the Iron Giant makes an appearance just like in Ready Player One, so pretty much, it was going for more of that vibe, pretty much, but, uh, yeah, when it comes to all that, it's entertaining, and that's one thing that uh, I will say the movie does get right, but when it comes to its story, it's not really all that interesting. But uh, hey, Ready Player One didn't have a perfect story, or the best characters, in fact, it's not quite as good as I remember it, but I still think it's a great film. Uh, but, uh, you know, it's, that was, I mean, that was different, but... You know, this is a sequel to Space Jam, and honestly, it's not quite as good as the original film. I mean, the first film is very, very nostalgic, and I think uh, when it comes to, you know, this film, I mean, <laughs> you know, the fact that they had to change Lola Bunny's appearance, and the fact that Pepe Le Pew is gone, and the fact that it's taking place during modern times, then, yeah, it's a very modern film. And, uh, hey, you know, I can't really say that I had a terrible time with this. In fact... There are a lot of things in this movie that I found to be very entertaining, and honestly, I like the way they were playing basketball. I mean, pretty much it's like basketball in a video game style, and I'm a big video game guy. And uh, there's a few references to that. There's a Game Boy in, in the movie, play, and there's a Looney Tunes game on there. It's actually one of the Crazy Castle games that the AVGN reviewed, so that was pretty cool. So, in the end, guys, I didn't hate this movie. I don't think it's as bad as critics are making it out to be. In fact, some people might love it, some people might hate it. It's probably going to be just as divisive as the first film was. I could be wrong, but in the end, you know, it might not have a good story or great performances from the live-action characters. I mean, I liked cartoon LeBron James. I thought that was cool. But uh, in the end, he was one of the weaker parts. And I know He's supposed to be one of the big parts since it's mostly about him, you know, joining up with the tunes. But, uh, yeah, I'm kind of going on for way too long. I can just put it this way, okay? If you guys expect to see tons of Warner Brothers references, as well as, you know, basketball and stuff and nostalgia, there are a few references to the original film, then you're probably going to get that here. Uh, for me, uh, it could have gotten much better. I mean, I mean, the movie could have done a little bit more justice. I mean, hey... It has heart to it, like, when it comes to him and his son, and the Looney Tunes, you know, basically treating each other as family, uh, especially when it comes to the basketball stuff. Like, I thought that was very touching. And uh, Zendaya does a pretty good job as Lola Bunny. So, yeah, let me just put it this way, okay? If you expect a masterpiece, no, that's not here. If you expect a film better than the original Space Jam... I wouldn't say that either, but uh, hey, I didn't fully hate this film, okay? Um, the references is what kept the film from making me just want to leave the theater, okay? Even though I never leave theaters when I see movies, but uh, yeah, it was the, the fun references were the real most entertaining part, and it does focus a lot on that, so I'm thankful for that. But for the most part, uh, it doesn't really do anything new, but uh, hey... I love the references, and that was the best way I got it. And you can't have fun with it, but uh, but uh, the weak villain and the weak performances from the regular characters really didn't do anything to boost up the movie from giving me, for me, giving it a better rating. But I'd pretty much be lying if I said I didn't have some enjoyment of this film, and I did, though it's not uh, as memorable as the first film was. But uh, hey, 
it does have some references to the original, but I'm going way too long with this, so I'm just going to give you guys my rating. I'm going to give Space Jam A New Legacy a 3 out of 5. So yeah, not as bad as, you know, some critics are making it out to be. But uh, it certainly has its problems, okay? But, and it is too long. That's something I almost forgot to mention. An hour and 55 minutes compared to the hour and 27 minutes that the first film had. And it was well paced too, much more well paced. And it didn't really have to add, you know, you know, the family stuff and all that. But, uh, yeah, I'm not sure, you know, I wonder if Kobe was still alive along with his daughter, would they have put him in the movie instead of LeBron? Were they going for that? I don't, I don't entirely know. But, uh, yeah. Anyways, thank you guys so much for watching. I'll be seeing Escape Room 2 this weekend. I'll have a review for that. I'm not sure, I'm not sure when I'm going to see it. I'm still at work and stuff, but, uh. I know you guys are can wait for that, but uh, yeah. Thank you guys so much for watching, and I'll see you guys later. Word out.